good morning everyone so today i am going to talk about intraoperative fluid strategies which is one of the most controversial topic in our perioperative management so there is a continuing debate about the quantity and the type of fluid to be used during the surgery so today i'll try to shed some light on that in the past liberal strategies were used so now in last 15 to 20 years it is replaced by restrictive strategy and now the newest concept in this matter is goal directed therapy average adult male is approximately 60% water by weight this varies with age gender and body habits so it is 55% in adult female 80% in newborn and approximately 65% in children around 2/3 of it is distributed into intracellular fluid and remaining 1/3 into extracellular which is further, which is further divided into intravascular and extravascular for the general maintenance of hydration it is necessary for the fluid to distribute into all compartments if the aim is to improve tissue perfusion by raising the intravascular volume then it is important for the fluid to stay within intravascular space and this concept will help us to understand why different fluids are available and for what purpose so very briefly i'll just talk about colloids and crystalloids and then we'll move move ahead colloids are high molecular weight proteins or large glucose polymers and they don't readily cross capillary membrane they stay entirely within intravascular space and they maintain the volume but sometimes they cause anaphylaxis or coagulopathy by impairing platelet activity and circulating concentration of clotting factors so and crystalloids the aqueous solution of low molecular weight compounds they cross capillary membrane easily as they are readily permeable but their effect is short lived now the characteristics of iv fluids most physiological iv fluid is rl and ns and dns it is rich in sodium iso isolite p is rich in potassium uh, rl and ns they are glucose free dextrose it's sodium free and ns dns and dextrose they are potassium free in renal failure rl isol isolites they they should be used in uh, they should be used cautiously and rl and isolite g it should be avoided in liver failure so there are some uh, recommendations about it uh, never use colloid as a sole agent we always replace fluid loss with most physiological fluid use blood products and colloid to replace intravascular volume acutely balanced crystalloids they are used to replace the ongoing water and electrolyte losses and fluid therapy in high risk patient patients it is guided by invasive cvp monitoring and markers of global tissue perfusion uh for pre op evaluation we should always take into account history of input and urinary output then bp when fluid deficit it's 6 to 8% of the body weight systolic blood pressure it falls more than 20 mm of mercury from supine to standing and as a compensatory measure heart rate increases but if this doesn't happen and either the patient is having autonomic dysfunction or he is on anti hypertensive treatment then skin and mucosa dry skin mucous membrane or decreased turgor it is present in case of dehydration and monitoring of uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit now goals uh, goals of intra uh, intraoperative fluid therapy adequate tissue perfusion and oxygenation maintenance of electrolyte composition normoglycemia and maintenance of body temperature now we are going to discuss about the liberal strategy uh, it is the combination of compensatory intravascular volume expansion maintenance fluid deficits third space loss and replacement of losses so i will discuss about each point one by one uh, first is cve so uh, whenever we will give anesthesia after that because of general and regional anesthesia there is arteriolar and venous dilatation due to which there is increase in vascular capacity so because of which there is decrease in peripheral venous pressure and in turn decrease in venous return which decreases cardiac output so because of which pre preloading is done at the rate of 5 to 7 ml per kg of balanced salt solution before or simultaneous with the onset of anesthesia uh, then maintenance fluid 
uh, in children, holiday and cigar method is used. In that, for first 10 kgs, we give 4 ml per kg per hour. For second 10 kgs, that is 10 to 20 kgs, 2 ml per kg per hour. And every kg thereafter, 1 ml per kg per hour. And for adult, it is 1.5 ml per kg per hour. Now, deficit, maintain, uh, in deficit, maintenance fluid for NBM period, uh, which is uh, hours of NBM into hourly maintenance fluid. Then whatever is measurable uh, fluid loss, uh, it, uh, RT suctioning or vomiting urine output, then half of the deficit, it should be administered in first hour and one fourth of the deficit in second and third hour each. Now there is a concept, there used to be a concept of third space loss, which is isotonic transfer of extracellular fluid from functional body, compart body fluid compartments to non-functional compartments. And depending on the location and duration of the surgery, the amount of tissue trauma, ambient temperature, and room ventilation, uh, it is distributive and evaporative surgical fluid loss. Uh, it, uh, it varies from surgeries to surgeries, and it is generally uh, dependent on degree, degree of tissue trauma. So for the superficial surgeries, such as ophthalmic surgeries, it is generally 1 ml per kg per hour. For minimal surgeries like hernia or FE, it is 2 ml per kg per hour. Then for moderate surgeries, 4 ml. And for the severe, it is 8 ml per kg per uh, 6 ml per kg per hour. Uh, then replacement of losses. Uh, in that, urine output, RT fluid output, and blood loss is considered. Uh, a fully soaked gauze, which is 4 by 4, it, has, it contains 10 ml of blood. And fully soaked Gamgee pad contains 100 to 150 ml of blood. So blood, uh, whenever the blood, uh, whenever we should consider blood transfusion, when a total blood uh, blood loss exceeds twenty percent of the total blood volumes, then re uh, okay. in pre premature average blood volume is approximately 95, 95 ml per kg. In full term, it is eighty five. For infant, it is 80. In male, it is 75. And in female, it is 65 ml per kg. Uh, there is one formula also. It is for allowable blood loss. Um, as per that, we can give blood. Then crystalloid should be given 3 is to 1 as a replacement and colloids as 1 is to 1. For maintenance, we generally use hypotonic solutions. And for replacement, isotonic solutions. Now, liberal strategy may cause hypervolumin due to excessive volume administration, even unnecessary deep anesthesia with hypotension also leads to excessive fluid administration. Now, this hypervolumia can result in reduced tissue perfusion due to tissue edema and clinically significant post-op fluid retention. So, this causes increased morbidity, increased length, length of stay in ICU and increased mortality. So, hypervolumia causes tissue edema increase extravascular fluid extravascular fluid in lung tissues impairs oxygen exchange and increase the risk of respiratory failure and pneumonia it causes pulmonary gi motility and possibly ileus impaired wound healing anastomotic dehiscence uh, coagulation abnormalities which is due to dilution of floating clotting factors decreased pulmonary compliance and in turn heart failure so uh, these consequences uh, th uh, this gave rise to the other strategy which is restrictive strategy. In this, aim is to maintain zero balance. So uh, we should achieve euvolumia. There is no preloading. Clear fluids are not to be withheld for more than two hours. Carbohydrate-rich solution till two hours prior to surgery. Balanced electrolyte crystalloid solutions. It should be given at the rate of 3 to 5 ml per kg per hour to replace sensible and insensible losses. For blood loss, uh, give additional fluid, it should be uh, 1 is to 1 only. And crystalloid to blood is 1.5 is to 1. If possible, avoid bowel preparation. Uh, gastric losses to be treated with potassium-containing fluids. And uh, there, is no concept of, uh, there is no concept of deficit due to overnight fasting. As a normal adult, blood volume is normal even after overnight fasting. So this is a demand-related fluid regimen. The classic third space has never been localized anatomically. So it doesn't exist. It is just that it is just the fluid which is shifted within the functional extracellular fluid compartment from the intracellular space to interstitial space. So there is no specific fluid loss. So as per the new concept, now we should not 
uh, replace this third space loss because there is no third space. So now there are some disadvantages also of this uh, restrictive uh, fluid strategy. As we are giving less fluid, so um, hypotension is seen. There is impaired tissue oxygenation because of hypotension and hypovolemia, impaired tissue perfusion, and increased post of nausea. There is a relief trial. Uh, as per that, increased, increased acute kidney injury also seen in case of this restrictive fluid strategy. So the last one is goal-directed therapy. It is focused on the use of cardiac output and related parameters as in point of fluid and drug to optimize tissue perfusion and oxygenation by maximizing oxygen delivery. So uh, one or more invasive dynamic uh, hemodynamic parameters are used to achieve pre-specified pre goal. Uh, most, supported, um, invest, uh, most supported is esophageal Doppler monitoring by literature. Predictors for fluid responsiveness, it includes pressure, uh, high, pressure high pulse pressure variation, stroke volume variation, vena caval collapsibility index, and end occlusion expiratory test. A fluid challenge test can be used to assess for fluid responsiveness without the limitations associated with pulse pressure variation or stroke volume variation. And it can be both diagnostic and therapeutic also. A patient is deemed fluid responsive if stroke volume or cardiac output increases by at least 10% following a fluid challenge. Finally, several studies seem to suggest that in low-risk patients undergoing minor and intermediate risk surgeries, liberal strategies may be preferable. It reduces post-op complications such as nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and it helps in early recovery. And many studies demonstrate that restrictive approach in major surgeries improves outcome it decreases length of hospital stay, decreases anatomical leakage, which is due to the bowel edema and surgical site infection. This is also, uh, as per the time, so this is also the same, uh, the same slide. So as per this rationale, uh, for minimal to intermediate surgeries uh, and for ASA, ASA1 and ASA3 patients, Plus, if uh, it is low risk surgery, uh, patients are low risk with minimal surgery, then yes, we can use liberal strategy. If patients are high risk and surgery is minimal, then we can use restrictive strategy. If the surgery is major, then it is always, or the patient is high risk. It is uh, ASA 4 and onwards, then we have to use GDT, which is goal directed therapy. So I'll just add some important points regarding pediatric population. In pediatric population, Modification in pre-op fasting is there. Carbohydrate contain, carbohydrate containing solutions should be given up uh, up to two hours. Intraoperative, we have to use one to two point five percent extrude solution to avoid hyper or hypoglycemia. Uh, in in case of febrile child, uh, we have to increase uh, the uh, fluid uh, fluid requirement as fluid increases calorie requirement. Then uh, we should not confuse maintenance fluid with the replacement fluid. So maintenance fluid and ongoing losses should be replaced uh, individually by isotonic crystalloids, colloids, or blood. And in peats, features of fetal kidney. Feature, uh, fetal kidney has low renal blood flow, blood flow plus low GFR. Immature tubular cells, they cannot completely reabsorb sodium under the stimulus of aldosterone. So fetal kidney is obligate sodium loser. Plus there is a limited concentration capacity which increases free lo bottle losses during excretion of the solute loss. So hypotonic IV therapy should be avoided as hypotonic uh, IV therapy, it will increase the risk of hypo uh, hyponatremia and then it can increase the risk of acute hyponatremic encephalopathy which can in turn uh, which can turn into death also. In pediatric group, goal-directed concept, it is also emerging. But as it is invasive, it has not yet gained popularity. So in children, restrictive or liberal, the dilemma is still persisting, uh, persistent. Now in children, the conclusion is in intraoperative, for the maintenance, we can use isotonic balance solution, never use hypotonic solutions. 
with 1 to 2.5 percent of dextrose. Um, for maintenance, as I said, that Holida and Sager formula, 4 is to 2 is to 1. For deficit, as I said, uh, half of the half of the deficit should be given in first hour and one fourth, one fourth in each in second and third hour. And in children, third space we should decide it carefully. Deficit, third space loss, and ongoing loss. Everything should be replaced with isotonic solution. And in case of hypovolemia, use isotonic solutions only. So my take home message: these recommendations they are just a framework. And it is a clinical importance to individualize this fluid therapy. Thank you so much.